Discord, the app made for gamers to chat, but later became the main way of online communication. I'm sure you own the app yourself and are probably in a handful of servers, but with more than 150 million users worldwide, there's bound to be some illegal activity here, from posting illegal government documents to straight up posting the murder you just committed to a random server. Today, we're talking about the dangerous world of Discord criminals. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. There's just a couple things I want to tell you guys. One is that I was a little bit wrong. I was a little bit wrong, I will admit. I thought the Croc Charms were going to sell out day one. They had, they haven't sold out yet. So if you want some, you could get some, a pack of three for $7. You know, I forgot that you guys have to buy Crocs and then you could get the Croc Charms. But they're still on the store, EarlDoesn'tExist.com. And if you haven't watched my last video, make sure to go watch it. It's about mannequin families on TikTok. After this one, of course, need that watch time. It's honestly one of my favorite videos on the channel. And I think it's going to be a hidden gem on my channel for the rest of my life and i'm gonna start streaming regularly i don't know my schedule yet but i'm gonna start streaming but i'm gonna start streaming on kick.com yep i can hear the booze guys i, I can hear the booze why am i doing kick.com well because when i stream on youtube on my second channel it feels like people tune in for 30 seconds then leave and i feel like if i go to kick then the people that went there for me are gonna be loyal and stay there my plan is to get really good at streaming on kick and then eventually start streaming on this main channel which i don't want to start here because that is way too overwhelming basically practice on kick and eventually come to this main channel and last thing is is, I'll give you guys a sneak peek to the next Earl plush. It is a collab with Freddy Fazbear. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Earl and Freddy Fazbear collab. Not official. I'm gonna have to keep saying it's a parody, but uh, they're currently being made and we're gonna be selling 500 at some point. So don't be spamming me. I'll be updating y'all. Discord, Twitter, Instagram. I'll be updating y'all. But I uh, just want to hype you guys up with that. Anyway, today we're gonna be talking about Discord criminals. People that have used the Discord app in a significant way with their criminal story. If you guys want to join my server, the link is down below. It is discord.gg slash tov. And that's really it. Let's get straight into the video. Menhaz Zaman. This story started on a Discord server called Perfect World Void, a server dedicated to meet other people who also found interest in the Perfect World video game, a 3D adventure and fantasy MMORPG exclusively for PC. In that server, a member by the username of simply Menhaz was known for being edgy and, to put it simply, basically an asshole. With Islamophobic views, racial statements, and borderline suicidal ideology, he ended up being banned due to that exact behavior, though he was eventually unbanned and given another chance. This seemed to be his main server he would use to hang out in. On July 27th, 2019, Menhaz posted a very strange text. Gonna kill my parents and go to jail, yo. Other members were disturbed, but then again, this dude was known for being edgy. Some time passed and he posted a photo of a dead woman with a text attached reading, This is my mom. This led the other members to become more disturbed, but they were also questioning how serious Menhaz was being. They saved the image and imported it into reverse image sites, but nothing was found. Now, this was getting scary. Could it have been Menhaz got the image off some obscure gore website? Well, nothing popped up in the reverse image results, so no. This image might actually be original. Sadly, after that, the same fate was brought upon his grandmother. He also sent that image to the server. But what were the members supposed to do? They had no information about him. Menhaz actually went back to playing Perfect World after committing the two murders. Creepy, right? It wasn't until then that a member joined his game and was able to get his IP address and find out he lived in Toronto, Canada. But still, it's hard to get someone's actual address from just an IP. You just get a general location. Then he threatened to kill his father and sister when they got home later that night. Unfortunately, this came true as he murdered his sister first, and then about an hour later, he murdered his father. The police ended up arriving, and the members have different stories on how the police was led to the right address. Like I said before, there's the IP address story, and there's another story that Menhaz had sent money to another member using PayPal, and that person was able to track down his location from PayPal. Before getting arrested, Menhaz left an eerie text. I've just slaughtered my entire family, and will most likely spend my life in jail if I manage to survive. I hope I made you laugh at one point or another. I hope you remember the good times. Times. I will miss you all. Menhaz was given 40 years in prison for the murders of four of his family members. The autopsy report came back and it suggests that he hit them all over the head with a crowbar and then slit their throats. In October of 2020, prior to his sentencing, Menhaz apologized for his actions during a sentence hearing. I would just like to apologize to anyone I have impacted negatively with my actions, especially to the people who knew my family, friends and loved ones who I know could have never seen something like this from me happening. But why did he even do this? Yeah, mental health issues, but I'll read you guys some 
some of his chat logs and hope to provide you guys with some more context, at least into the way he was thinking. I started skipping university the first year I entered. It was for mechanical engineering. Believe me, if I could rewind time, I would. But after failing half my subjects, I had to repeat my courses. It is here in second semester, I started getting depressed, became an atheist, and ultimately created this plan. So for three years, I've been telling my parents I go to university when actually I was just hanging out at the mall four days a week. The mall's on the same route as my university. I told my parents that my classes weren't that long, so I would just chill at the mall from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. while also going to the community gym. I did this because I don't want my parents to feel the shame of having a son like me. I choose to kill them instead out of cowardness. Due to me being an atheist, I believe this is the only life we get. I know it might sound confusing, but what's done is done, and what had been planned has been concluded. I'm sorry if this makes you upset. Please try and remember the good times. What about your girlfriend, dude? Broke up with her long ago. Didn't want her to be associated with any of this. Why did you send it to friends? Coco asking me the same thing. What's the answer though? I don't know. Maybe a part of me wants it to spread faster so I get caught faster and this purgatory I'm in ends faster. But also, I really made some nice bonds with people. I want them to know I didn't just have a kid or move away to stop playing games. I wanted them to know what actually happened. Stop leaking my shit. I got spies, by the way. Why their lives and not yours? I'm a pathetic coward and subhuman. Since I'm atheist, I believe there's no afterlife. So I was scared to die. And I wanted them to die so that they didn't suffer knowing how much of a pathetic subhuman I was. It's all very selfish. I'm just pathetic. Brandon Andrew Clark. Now we spoke about this dude in an old video about 4chan criminals, but I'm bringing it up again simply because one, he used Discord in a very disturbing way, and you guys will see how. And two, with my channel, I do like talking about internet topics the most. And if I can spread any information that ensures that you guys stay safe on the internet, I'm going to do so. Especially discord this story took place in 2019 utica new york and sadly ended with the death of 17 year old bianca devins she looked forward to attending mohawk valley community college to study psychology though her loved ones were worried about her battles with mental illness particularly with depression anxiety borderline personality disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder she quote had been in and out of the hospital receiving mental health treatment for much of her teen years she would spend a lot of her time on internet forums specifically 4chan and discord bianca had endured online abuse from incels for at least two years. Then, Brandon Clark began following her on Instagram in April of 2019, and the two likely connected there. Friends and family disagreed with the police's claim that their acquaintance was personally intimate. Bianca's mother believed that Brandon wanted more, but Bianca said that she told him that she didn't want to date him. She just wanted to be friends. Although one of her sisters referred to Brandon as a reliable family friend, one of her friends was worried that Brandon might be taking advantage of her sexually while the two were high. According to rumors, Brandon would give Bianca drugs to entice her to hang out with him. Brandon was one of many incels who interacted with her and talked to her for the sake of hoping that they can, uh, do something else. These are called orbiters, men who hang around women just with the intentions to have sex. Bianca accepted Brandon's invitation to attend a concert. After meeting Brandon, her mother decided to let her daughter go on dates with him because he seemed like a genuine normal guy. They attended the concert on July 14th, 2019, and Bianca spotted another internet friend there by the name of Alex. When Brandon went to go get something from his car at one point, it appeared that she was more interested in Alex than him. And when he got back, he noticed Alex and Bianca kissing. He then had a horrible change of mood, and he was also her ride home. A short while later, a message was uploaded to a Discord server that Bianca was in with an image of her throat being slit. Sorry, f you're gonna have to find someone else to orbit. And again, members were incredibly disturbed, reverse image searched it, found nothing, and there was really nothing they could do. There's another screenshot where Brandon says, my f car. I f Bianca dumbass. Anyways, remember to subscribe to PewDiePie. Also, to Alex with a Chinese username, I hope it was worth it. She was gonna go home today. Then Brandon began posting some stupid subliminal sh on Instagram and Snapchat, and eventually the Utica police got a call from Brandon himself explaining what he had done, where he was, and what he was planning to do. 911, what is the emergency? Uh, my name is Brandon. Um, the victim is Bianca Michelle Devins. I'm going to myself. It's just stay in line with me, okay? No, I'm not gonna stay in line with you. I'm going to be dead on the ground. When the police arrived, they discovered Brandon trying to himself by stabbing himself in the neck. They also found a pit of fire with his laptop in it. Although he failed to kill himself, Bianca's lifeless body was found under a tarp. Brandon has been given a 25 year to life prison sentence. Hey guys, I'm not sorry for interrupting the video, but I just want to remind you guys to keep watching. That's it. I'm not promoting anything besides the video itself. According to YouTube, the average watch time for my videos is about 8 minutes and 32 seconds, so you guys should keep watching the video. I'll do a little dance for you guys. Hopefully, it could be like a ritual of some sort, so you guys can keep watching the f***ing video. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's that oh, ritual dance. Fuck, keep watching. Not really much. I already did the ritual dance. I'm scratching my ass right now. I already did the ritual dance, so y'all are forced to keep watching. Y'all are forced to keep watching. Back to the video. Jack Teixeira. Jack Teixeira, 21-year-old from Dighton, Massachusetts, was described as a, quote, troubled high school student by The Atlantic and reported that in March of 2018, he was suspended from school after a classmate overheard him make remarks about weapons including Molotov cocktails, guns at school, and racial threats, according to federal prosecutors. That led local police to deny him a gun license when he applied for one. When Teixeira applied to join the military, investigators were aware of the incident but allowed him to enlist. Teixeira's military record indicates that he enlisted in the National Guard on September 26, 2019 and was stationed at Otis Air National Guard Base in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. But why is this relevant? Well, this young man somehow got access to some top secret government files and shared them with his buddies on Discord. Credit to the Washington Post for the following information. The leaked documents included the whereabouts and movements of high-ranking political leaders and tactical updates on military forces, along with geopolitical analysis and insights into foreign governments' efforts to interfere with elections. In other words, the leak revealed how the United States gathers foreign intelligence, not just on Russia's military and spy agencies, but also partners like Ukraine and Israel, in addition to key allies in Asia, such as South Korea. The documents were posted to a server named Thug Shaker Central. And let me just say, it's super funny having to hear a reporter say that. The Guardsman allegedly began posting the classified documents to his online gaming group, Thug Shaker Central, apparently unnoticed last December. A chat group participant is accused of uploading thousands of images of secret papers to another Discord server on February 28, 2023. Then, according to another person, they uploaded those pictures to a Minecraft Discord server. The New York Times was the first to notice the leak after secret information started showing up on Russian language Telegram channels. On April 21st, they reported that a Discord account with traits resembling Teixeira's online profile had shared written summaries of classified information and probably shared photos of documents to a Discord chat group with about 600 members from February 2022 to approximately March of 2023. Some members of the server showed the Washington Post a video of Teixeira shouting racist and anti-Semitic slurs before firing a rifle. A friend described Teixeira as a patriotic, devout Catholic, and a libertarian with an interest in guns and doubts about America's future. But how did he even gain access to these sensitive documents? Again, shout out to the Washington Post for this information. Teixeira's security clearance level wasn't clear, but he did have access to an internal Defense Department computer network for top secret information called the Joint Worldwide Intelligence Communication System. Access to this would have given Teixeira the ability to read and potentially print records classified at the same level as many of the leaked documents. Teixeira told members of his online group that he worked as a technology support staffer at a base on Cape Cod, and that this was how he was able to access the classified documents. National Guard units performed some support services for active duty units, including intelligence support for the Joint Staff. The New York Times did their fair share of investigating and noticed the same table pattern from an image of the document to a random image he posted on another site. On the morning of April 13th, 2023, the FBI detained Teixeira at his Dighton home where he resided with his mother and stepfather. Investigators discovered Teixeira's arsenal next to his bed, which included handguns, shotguns, bolt-action rifles, an AK-style rifle with a large magazine, as well as other weapons. Teixeira has been charged with retention and transmission of national defense information and willful retention of classified documents which carries a maximum of 15 years in prison. At a May 19th hearing, a judge ruled Teixeira would be held without bail until trial, and he has not yet entered a plea. Tyler Chase Compton. Now, I'm using Tyler Chase Compton as an example for the amount of criminals solely on Discord for CP, and I'm gonna be referring to that as cow poop moving forward. Wow, Discord being used for cow poop distribution. What a shocker. In December of 2021, deputies with the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office received a tip on their cyber tip line about 19-year-old Tyler Compton. The cyber tip came from Discord themselves. By the way, all you cow poop people that are on Discord for that, Discord knows what you're doing and they gonna snitch on your ass. I'm just letting you know. Or should I not have let you know? Damn. Okay. Deputies claimed they served a subpoena on AT&T regarding the phone number, and deputies also requested information from Discord, but they claimed that the account had been removed. They carried out a search warrant at the residence on April 18th, 2022, and took an HP laptop, a piece of paper with email addresses and passwords, a USB, a Samsung cell phone, an Acer desktop computer, several CDs, a piece of 5x7 paper, a blue cell phone, a TCL cell phone, and an iPhone. The amount of cow poop on those devices had to be fucking insane not to mention that this tyler dude bro 19 years old like you basically just turned into an adult 
Did you even try? And the details about it are horrible. I'm not even gonna mention this video, just know. Super young cow poop. Compton was booked into the Escambia County Jail with a hold of $50,000. Cow poop on Discord is so common, it, it's part of the meme now. And in fact, Google shows 1.9 million results. There are plenty of articles showcasing men being charged for sharing cow poop on Discord, but there are also minors selling these images of themselves to those men. I remember this used to be a big problem on Discord. I don't know if that's still a thing though. There are some teenagers that take advantage of uh, those types of people and sell them their own cow poop, which is by the way, still illegal, even for you being the, the minor doing it, still distribution of it, which is stupid. Bro, get a job. You're a teenager, get a f***ing job. If you want money, get a job. <sighs> but yeah, that's it for this one. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And there's an announcement I forgot to say at the beginning of the video, but I'll probably say in the next one, but I'll tell you guys right now, I'm working on a cartoon. Yeah, an original cartoon. It's called Two Gay Cats. It's about Sam and Paul and their adventures hanging out. So it's going to be a comedy show animated. Did I already say that? Yeah, well, yeah, it's going to be animated. And uh, it's really cool because I voice both of them. They have the same voice but it's, you guys are gonna be able to tell who's talking because they have different looks. And uh, it's just a super cool show. It's really focused. Yeah, it's funny, but it's really focused on just their conversations. You guys will see when it comes out. I won't let y'all down. Episodes will be five minutes in length, but the pilot is about three minutes just to see if you guys like it or not. But yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to go follow me on Kick and join the Discord server. They're on the screen. I'm gonna be streaming on Kick soon. But yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's actually it. I'll see you guys next time I upload.